I'd like to do is introduce Angela Renaud and Christine Thompson from the Arts and Sciences. What they're going to do um, this morning is to offer some um, updates and information regarding our new programs, liberal studies and communication studies, and um, give us an update on counseling psychology. So, Angela, thank you. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't realize it was supposed to come bearing gifts. <laughs> We're giving you the gifts. Oh, yeah. So, um, if I were you sitting at this presentation, my first question would be, why now? Why after 100 years are we offering majors in arts and sciences? And our license to kill comes from the change in the mission. So the new mission has words to the effect that we will be offering programs that provide opportunities for professional success and lifelong personal and intellectual growth. What's missing? Nothing about career education. Not to say that we're no longer going to have programs that are career focused. That mission has been expanded, which gives us the opportunity to provide new programs and also to open up a new recruitment pool for all of you. So there's um, a double benefit for what we're doing. So what I would like to do is just to spend a few minutes highlighting some of the um, notable points about our three new majors, but I want to spend most of the time giving you opportunity to ask us questions. Whatever I don't know, Chris will know, I'm sure, because she has a better grasp of all this than I do, actually. So the first program is the counseling site. And as you know, we will begin a, a master's program starting in 2014. So this is technically a four plus major. And I'm not saying four plus one, because now that we're going to have graduate programs on a semester format, we're still working out the details as to how we're going to lay out the program. So it's going to be at least an academic year, probably two summers, because there are licensing requirements. Which brings up the whole difference between the undergraduate program and the graduate program. In counseling site, we're probably the only school in the nation that has an undergraduate program. And other schools have, have psychology, but not counseling. Um, so students would leave this program mm, capable of, of acquiring jobs and entry-level positions, but always under the supervision of a licensed counselor. To become a licensed counselor, you need to have that master's degree, plus you have to do clinical hours, they vary by state for licensure, that go even beyond the master's degree. And that would be the clinical hours would have to be under the supervision of someone licensed. So it is a process. Students coming in should know that that the, the undergraduate degree is step one toward that career path that requires a master's program. The program does have two hands-on units, two um, internships. One of them comes in the sophomore year and it's a shadowing, so it gives them a good idea. They get, up, they get out there and they see what's going on. And then the second one is in the senior year, which is the whole term of um, a more intensive internship. Yeah, what's the um, the first one is I think the 10 hours, is just 10, 10, 10 to 15 hours. In fact, we're right in the middle of changing that. And then the second one is a whole, is a whole term. So it's the equivalent of... A total of 10 to 15 hours? Yeah, and then they have seminar work too, but just yeah. in the field. And even before that, they do community service where they, we place them in different um, social service agencies. So we try right from the very first term, try to get them in the field. Last week, they did a field trip where they went to the prison. Um, so, you know, we, we try to round it out the best we can to give them good experiences. And that's the advantage of having small classes, not lecture classes. You know, a, a private education that we can give them these enhancements. Um, all right, so that's the first degree. You're probably most familiar with that anyways because you've been selling it. But would, do you have any basic questions or questions that... Uh, Yes. With, with us ripping up for the master's degree program, yes. and it'll be in the fall of 2014 because this class will fall into it, yes. can people come from outside with different degrees on extra psychology and go into that psychology master's degree? Yes. Okay. Yes. But 
here's our challenge. We have to figure out how this we can deliver this as not only full-time, but also part-time. Because people coming in as career professionals, most likely they're going to want it part-time. And we were thrown a curve. We thought we were going to do it in uh, trimester's terms. But now we were recently told we're going to do it in semester. So we had to start all over again. I don't have exact answers for you. But our intention is to run it both part-time and full-time. Yes, and people from out of our program can also go into it. Is it accurate to say that when you're talking to people that it is a directed psychology as compared to a general psychology, which is kind of a whole of all classes that you <coughs> take, where this is more directed like, towards well, focused. guidance counseling? Or well, as you know, there are, there are three yeah. tracks. But if, if you think about it, it, those tracks only entail three required courses. So it's not like they're going to get a plethora of courses in any one area. Right, right. It's undergraduate. Those three tracks then will be repeated on the graduate level. And it, is it also appropriate to say that the industry standard is, if you're going to go on to practice, that the industry standard is going to be a master's degree? It is, because it, that's a right. requirement for life. Yeah. yeah, you know, and, and I was thinking about this, too. If you have a student who is interested in general psychology, then they're not going to be at a disadvantage for coming here, because they get as much general psychology. They're going to get a liberal arts degree. It'll have a little bit more focus than general psychology, but it's not wasted. That's something you might want to keep in mind, too. You're not doing anyone a disservice if they say, oh, you know, I'm not interested in counseling side. I'm interested in psychology. They will be getting psychology here, too. Am I, am I, I think that's right. I think they get the full range of courses, aside from, you know, of course, the intro, intro site, but they have abnormal in personality and developmental, and they get the full range that someone in a psychology program would get. And also, um, Let's, let's say by the senior year, let's say even the students who are in for counseling side, let's say they, they decide, no, I don't think I want to do counseling. They could take those three courses that otherwise would have gone into the internship and use, use it for other electives without going into the internship. So they have that flexibility too. I have a question from one of my counselors. They want to know, after taking this, uh, this degree, if you can sit for the such and such exam, no. No. And I, I had no idea. I said, oh, I'll get that too. No, you can't. But what in the master's, in the master's program, it, it, um, well, both the undergraduate and master's were designed with the um, K prep standards. So whatever the requirements, the national accreditation standards, they will be covered both in undergraduate and graduate. The, um, to sit for the licensure and for the K prep exam, that comes at the end of the master's program. That's the only time they can sit. In fact, they even have a prep course for that built into the master's program. So yes, after the master's program, you can sit, you can sit for the exam. Okay. Right. But state licensure will, will vary because they'll, some states will require more clinical hours than other states. And so we can't guarantee that they're going to be able to sit for licensure immediately upon graduation. It depends on the state. So like I have Connecticut students and mass, so would they, I don't here, would they be able to help the student get ready for Connecticut? Or if that's where they want to go back to, does that make sense? If every state is different. If they know that in Connecticut you need this, will they be able to? They, they're different in terms of what they require for um, clinical exposure, for clinical hours. As far as what um, the formal education part, because we, we follow K prep standards, we're not going to vary. And we're going to meet the requirements of all the states. So no one will be at a disadvantage. They might have to tweak it. Angela, what's that acronym, hate prep? Did you say Yeah, I was pronouncing it wrong. You can probably guess how I was saying. Um, I don't know what it stands for, but I can I could give that to you later. It's C-A-C-R-E-P. Um, the council? And, uh, yeah, I think it's like counseling association, but I'm not so certain of what all the acronyms stand for. Okay. Yeah, would you say to know that? Like, yes. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll, just, I'll find out what that is, and I can send send a log so we can share with Send it to you about 15. Okay. Okay. Right. So you mentioned a semester delivery system. Yeah. Is graduate that, school. Is that going to be for the whole entire graduate school? Right. So how does that affect this program where we're allowing uh, undergrads to start taking graduate courses? That's a very good question. It's being worked on as we speak. Okay. The key question because we're still on. marketing courses one and other areas. That would require it. That would say, so maybe it is called four plus. 
what is it? Or less? You know, it, I have to see it in black and white. But it seems to me what we'll probably have to do is to batch the courses, let them finish their undergraduate courses, and then give them a semester where they can go in and, and take whatever. I, I don't feel it's going to work any other way. But I want to wait. You know, we'll have to just get together and figure this out. They might, what Brandon. they might do is they might sequence the classes a little bit differently from, so someone doing a four plus one program where the grad programs will be on a semester system. So that would be one class the first semester, one class the second semester. They might open up a summer session in order to accommodate that third class for a four plus one program. Because as it stands now, in your senior year, you can take one class per term for a four plus one. They're looking at the sequencing. And this is just a new topic of conversation. They haven't come up with a definitive answer. That's one of the possibilities of how to make it work with a four plus one. I haven't seen it either, Angela, so it's all new to me. I just heard it the other day, actually. Is there any thought of switching the whole university? Okay. I have not heard. Have you heard? Oh, yes, I've heard. I have not. But we're not doing it. We're not doing it now. So. I've not heard. It, well, just think about the, the um, implications. We'll have faculty teaching undergraduate and graduate. How do you make a schedule? It's tough. So there's a lot of unanswered questions, but we will get through it. So should we move on? Sure. So, so the communications studies major. Um, so what are the advantages to this? How is it different from other majors? There is a required internship. Um, students will get the foundational courses, the theoretical and the practical, like the, how the industry works. So then they also will take advantage of other offerings at the university. They'll be taking, they'll have the ability to take marketing and advertising from the College of Business. SCE has a lot of courses that that mesh with communications as far as the entertainment industry. And the School of Technology also has courses in design and um, new media that the students can take. So the offerings are quite extensive for this major. As far as jobs, um, as Vera had explained to all of you in the summer, you think of it in two tracks. It would be the typical may, um, jobs that go with the industry in television and radio and print. Then, a much larger pool, most huge companies, Johnson & included, has a communications staff. So there are many openings for students to get into. Um, all three of the majors, if you think about it, in liberal arts, Students have the expectation that there's going to be some requirement for graduate work somewhere down the road. And I think you should think about that, too, because it's not like a culinary student who's thinking, you know, I'm doing my two years, my four years, and then I go out. These students who are more traditionally minded have graduate school in the back of their head. So it's not unheard of that if they're going to have true career progression, that at some point they would, they would be going to graduate school. So they geared for that, too. They would be advised for that. So there would be entry-level positions in both the traditional industry and also those that are more related to any kind of business that has a communications staff. Are we looking at a master's in communications? No, we're not. What was that? She said, are we looking for a master's in communications? We're not looking at that now. Would a student interested in pursuing broadcasting choose this major or no? If they can take the TV or radio route? When we don't have a, um, a studio, per se, and we're not going to, we don't have a, like BU has a radio program, so we don't have that kind of hands-on ability. Most communications programs do not either. Um, when they do internships, that's where they get the hands-on experience. And we have the opportunity, they could go out three different times if they want to, the equivalent of one course each time, or they can use their credits together and do a whole term at an internship site. So they'll have a lot of opportunity to explore the industry, um, not only through what we would consider traditional media, but also we have partners in, um, in the community that we've had for many years for community service. 
and all of them need help with their communication. So there will be that type of thing. And the Small Business Administration that we have at Johnson & Wales, they have many, many clients who can use the services of communication um, majors. But couldn't this also, I, I, I know, like when you think about a communications director, especially because we just have the election, that a lot of students, a lot of students are interested in um, political science or something like that. Also, would be, this would be a great way if they wanted to be a communications director for a, a political, you know, a, a political campaign or, you know, um, federal government or, or, or something like that, but that would be a viable way that they could do political science and act, you know, be involved in that area, but actually be able to be Right, and it, this is a general degree, so right, right. it's a starting place, and you build on it as you would with Legos. You just keep building and building. So if you have a bent, Lisa Polo, um, Lisa, and now communications, what's her last name? Yeah, right. um, she said she looks, because she's a communications major, obviously. She said, I, I look at this program and think of this is a communications degree plus. So you, you bring up a good point. If you're interested in the political sphere, well, then you would take a lot of for your elective, you take more political science courses, and you would gear your internship toward um, a site that would deal with that. So you can build on it, and that's the advantage of having it structured loosely, so you can take courses from all these different schools and colleges. That's by design, so you can kind of focus. If you're more interested in the entertainment world, you take more SEE courses. If you're more inter um, interested in new media or graphic design, you take more technology courses. So really, the concentrations are basically going to happen. More it is, but we're not even calling them concentrations because that's kind of misleading too. It's just that you do, when you look at what's offered, you you build. It's like a, a self the designer degree. Mm -hmm. You build what you want, what direction you want so, to go so in. So it's different though. We're used to we're used to these are the classes you can take, with the exception of these two classes, where the major will be a core major, and they'll be able to pull in what you want. The, yeah. the, there is a set of foundation courses, which you might call core courses, right. that all students will take, but then there are some sections, one's called principles, the other's called practices, where students can in fact choose out of a menu which course, so they can shape their degree in the direction they want. Um, and I, I think that means that you're going to see, say if you're looking at five students, that they might have taken five different sets of courses depending upon their interests, whether that's with digital media or entertainment or political science or whatever the range might be that they want. And even law, because we have a lot of courses in law. We're going to um, start next year on uh, law advising, um, and I'll, I'll speak to that in, in a minute, but even students in communications who have an interest going to law school later on, that they can start building in that direction too. So we can say we have a pretty long let me, let me hold on that for a second. No, and you're right. Okay, so let's let's move on to the little study. And someone someone just asked me, does that mean we're going to have pre-law? And someone said, no, there's no such thing as pre-law. And she's absolutely right. Instead, the um, American Bar Association has an educational unit that gives a structure to law advising. And that's what schools have. Because you can go to law school with just about any major. So we're going to start the advising program, hopefully as soon as in the fall and maybe in, not until um, 2014. So we, we have um, under, our liberal studies program. under our liberal studies program, but it's just open to any student. We'll have it on campus. Because remember, you can major in accounting, you can major in finance, a lot of different majors and head toward law school. So we want to have that structured law advising, which would include opportunities for students to have different speakers come on campus and also preparation for the LSAT. Um, and, and I don't know all the components yet because we're still designing it, but we are going to use the federal, the, um, the national accrediting body set of materials in order to start our advising program. So. A little bit more about liberal studies. So this is your, your, your typical student who wants to study English or history or philosophy. But where is um, the enhancement or the differentiation is there's a required minor in either business, general business, or in project management, which comes out of the School of Technology. And there's a required internship. Donna Thompson, our chairperson for English, likes to characterize it in this way. 
This is for those parents who are a little nervous about the kids going to school and just taking liberal arts. Mm -hmm. So it's like hedging your bets, having the um, required minor and the internship gives them a, at least a, an introduction to the world of work. Remember now, these students most likely come in understanding that at some point they're going to need to go to graduate school. So this is not the end, it's just the beginning. It's the end of the beginning, as Churchill said. I have a question. When we did a WebEx with Jeff Sinks, and we talked about... We did a what? We did a WebEx about what they announced communication center. And he talked about the technology piece that the students picked that minor, and he said it would be more on the project and management. Side. So that's, that's the minor, not for communications, it's for no, the no, yeah, yeah, for liberal studies. Right. Um, is there any thought to maybe giving them website development? Because the talk was, is, okay, where are these people going to go to work? Would it be maybe a nonprofit? And having that website development piece would be a feather in their cap, being hired by a nonprofit because they're looking to need someone that can have that resource versus paying another company outside. The degree has many many electives. Okay. So they could pick up um, electives. Okay. So from anywhere. That's right. Okay. That is a similarity to the communications degree that the students can have will have access to our offerings all through the university. So you'll see how many free electives they have, not just in ANS, but also electives throughout the college. I think the uh, project management minor has some it does have some technology uh, courses that, you know fundamentals of visual basic and programming and, and some of aside from the project management. But in addition to that, students do have uh, 22.5 um, credits for free electives. So if, for example, they were interested in going in that direction mm -hmm. with website development, I think there's plenty of room in the program for them to take that in, in their specific okay. to their I think it's just a different mindset for us, especially for us that are alum, because we're always told this is what you take, and this, even with your electives, this is what you can take, where it's Come so diverse, and there's a lot of, with these majors. There's a lot more crossover. And, and that t that points to the fact that um, faculty advising is going to be very very yeah. important. Yeah. So is their internship going to be based off their uh, concentration or mind? You know, I, I see a lot of overlap with the kind of internship experiences that would be available to the communications majors would also be available to these folks. Because what are the skills that they're acquiring? They're learning how to write, to talk, um, to think critically, to solve problems, to be able to look at knowledge from a lot of different perspectives, to be able to deal with ambiguity. That kind of thing would give them the same kind of entree into the positions that of the internship positions that the communication students would have. Um, we've had extensive talks with career development and also with the Small Business Administration, and they don't see problems placing students. Can those internships be more specialized to the interests of the students to the extent possible? I don't, I'm hesitating a little bit because I don't want to make any promises that we can't deliver, but to the extent that we have them available, yeah. Just quickly looking over um, the sheet that you gave us. So basically they have the general track for uh, global studies that they're going to take, and then they're going to choose from either the humanities, social sciences, or the math track, and then they're going to be able to do their internship. They're also going to be able to have 18 credits for electives that they could choose from from arts and sciences, and then they, they have a required minor in general business or project management, and they still have general. Okay, the, the only, you will correct all of you except for the very first thing. There are three tracks, and there's very really oh, minor no, differences. Track, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they could either come in and have a balance of um, um, humanities, social sciences, math, and science, or if they don't like that math science as much, they could take more courses in humanities and social science. On the other hand, if they want more math and science, they would just switch it. They would take more courses in math and science rather than humanities and social science. So it just has to do with what the balance. Right. Yeah. Knowing that this is such a new program, and maybe some of our other programs are more established, and 
and that's just like more of the well-known. Um, yeah. You're talking about the quality of the of the placements? Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, because it's a new program, are they going to say, oh, I didn't know Johnson Wells had communications? You know what I mean? Um, I'm just curious. I, a lot of students ask a lot of questions because liberal arts students tend to kind of go in lots of different directions, and I don't know. Well, you know, there is one way to look at it because we already have those established ties with um, sites that have to do with marketing, advertising, and so forth. So we, we already have a way in those. Yeah, you know, I gotta be really careful the way I say this because we're not in competition with the advertising students or the marketing students. It really is dependent on the employer. What kind of person are you looking for? Are you looking for someone that has more technical knowledge in advertising or somebody that you want to have come in and, you know, do a lot of writing, do a lot of problem solving? It depends. It depends. But the good part is, as an institution, we already have those relationships. And it, it, it depends on, you know, the, the strength of the student. Oh. Mm -hmm. And to go back to um, Council of Psychology and Communications, um, that's more physical arts, but, and I know these are both new, but um, has there been talk among the faculty and advisors for um, some of the clubs and associations so that oh, when I talk to students so many times, we have very strong clubs and, and uh, affiliations to industry right. in their major. And that really gives a lot of validity to our programs and parents like to hear about the professional associations that we have. We have a counseling psychology club. We do. Yes, okay. we do. We don't have students yet in, for the others, but I couldn't, you know, I could foresee. So is there some um, recognizable communications association in America that, you know, it's not like the American Culinary Federation. I don't Everybody know. Everybody knows that. You know, oh, no, I don't. I, I, mean, I don't know quite know. Okay, so that's too But, but the, the two psychology, the, we do. Yes, and okay. the two faculty who developed the degree are both young, young PhDs, um, very enthusiastic, and they're always coming with different ideas. So I, I trust that they're going to be able to make the connections that we need. And we're hiring one other full-time person in, com in um, communications, too. Just to address internships, I think the thing is it's like we have an affiliation with VH1 right now and Good Morning America and, and, um, and MTV. I think the thing is that what they're going to try to do is expand, because like you take our marketing and advertising students, so with the communications degree, I think that they're going to try to expand that a little more to the degree that okay. So a little bit. So, so they're going to try, yeah, yeah, I think you're still going to get internships. It's just. Maureen Dumas doesn't have any trepidation about yeah. finding spots for these students. Um, on the other hand, you know, the most competitive placements, as is current, would be for the most qualified students. Yes, you know, you find like business students, very specific culinary students want to go into the kitchen, liberal arts students are like, I look a little bit of this, I look a little bit of that. And it's like, oh, it's great. Yeah, so is it fun talking to these students? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have to, do you go to different fairs or different events to recruit students for these majors? And no, because if you're in a business class, a good amount of them aren't going to go to business, a good amount of them might be wanting to go to liberal arts, or a good amount of them are going to be wanting to go to culinary arts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
what is this? I don't know what you said. I want to be a journalist and we direct them to communication studies and say this is a lot broader than just, but it has the writing intensity. Yes, it does. That's how I feel. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because it's more the written part and they have to have the English grades and that. And, and I'm laughing because I can't see you talking about the title. Is it a good idea? And not, and not only that, don't forget, there's, that's, a, lot of, there's a lot of um, media-related journalistic type um, work in new media. And so if they want to write for web design, if they want to write for, um, I'm the last person to talk about this, but in, in that area, so let those transferable writing skills go into a lot of different industries. We, we had um, a meeting with the, the uh, Bob Whitcomb, who is the top editorial writer for the Providence Journal, and he's interested in teaching for us. And so, you know, I explained to him, well, this is not a journalism program per se, so you know, but those skills are transferable, so there's, there's still room for teaching the, the foundations of journalism, which then can be applied elsewhere. And we do have a, a few courses, um, in particular, I'd say the uh, news writing course. So the students are introduced to sort of the practices of, of journals and you know, do a few different kinds of activities on report and reporting. And then, of course, there are other writing courses of travel writing and food writing and so on. So they can, can target their skills a little bit. Is it also creative writing? Yes. So lots of choices. I know, I know. It's, it's a journey. It is. But it's exciting. So open another door to talk to a whole other population. I think it's very, it's very um, hard to overstate the new amount of possibilities for these majors, at least the last two, because of the way they're designed. And um, we have the good fortune of already having courses in a lot of different majors available to them. One last question. All right, cool. I want to thank Angela for, for joining us.